Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the oldest meeting of Murrumbidgee Council. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of the lands and the waters of the Murrumbidgee local government area and to all Aboriginal elders, past and present, and emerging. We are committed to honouring the continuing connection that the First Australians hold with Murrumbidgee's land, waters, and community as one of the oldest living cultures in human history. In the spirit of open, accessible and transparent government and to ensure this meeting is open to the public, this council meeting is being recorded and live streamed to the Murrumbidgee Council Facebook page. A recording will also be placed on council's website following the meeting. I'll call for any why that's too much. Tim Strong, Kevin Gilbert. Would you like to move those apologies be accepted, please? Councillor Turpin, second Councillor Saxon. Those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those against? Carried, thank you. I remind everybody of their peculiar interest declarations. Anybody who has anything to declare, could they please do so now? If not, we will move on to um, an extraordinary uh, area of business before we start our mainstream meeting. And I would like to um, acknowledge uh, that the Emeritus former Mayor, uh, Philip Wells is joining us today for a presentation. So, Phil, I'd like you to come forward, please. In um, 2018, we presented to Councillor Philip Wells an Emeritus Mayor Award from Local Government New South Wales in recognition of his 10 years as Mayor of Murrumbidgee Shire Council. At the same time, Councillor Wells also received a Certificate of Appreciation for 18 years' service to Council and the community. Today, we are pleased to present to Emeritus Mayor Wells an outstanding service award for 20 years of service in local government in New South Wales as a former member of both Murrumbidgee Council and the Murrumbidgee Shire Council. So our warmest congratulations to you, Phil. Um, Um, engagement and involvement and leadership in local government is um, a meritorious achievement. Um, look what it does to us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think uh, the community of Darlington Point and the former Murrumbidgee Shire Council was lucky to have um, your leadership. And I think you, when you were involved, um, you gave over and above what is expected. Um, and it was very, very valuable. Um, so we congratulate you on your time uh, and your investment in the Darlington Point community. And uh, as we did at the time, we wish you well in what you um, undertake from, from there on in. Um, but your, uh, your legacy is, um, is quite uh, uh, meritorious, as I said. And we, um, we look forward to um, you, know, you still being involved in Darlington Point um, in, in, in other ways, rather than just sitting at the council table, the 20 years service to local government is um, not to be underestimated. So very well done. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, it is a long time when you look back, 20 years on being on council, but um, I was elected by the, by the community and um, I hope that throughout that time that I was able to, through council and with council, um, achieve things throughout the Shire, um, and I hope that uh, I hope that I was able to leave it, with the help of council, of course, in a better position than it was some twenty odd years ago. Uh, there are lots of things that council did achieve, and of course there are some, always some things that uh, I wasn't able to achieve. But by the same token. At the end of that time, and we look, when you look at council now, I believe it's in very good stead, and um, we look forward to uh, the community continue continuous growth throughout the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
still and I'm, 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 I'm thinking, you know, he walked pretty well for um for 20 years in a local government. I just hope I've got more here than you've got to work. <laughs> Company, so thank you very much for your feedpoints. There are challenging times. There are challenging times, yes, we do acknowledge that. So thank you very much. I appreciate this very much and done. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, councillors, and we will just uh, reconvene. I would um, like to um, uh, somebody to move the minutes from the ordinary council meeting of the 25th of July, please. Move councillor Kerfi, second of councillor Sexton. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. We'll move to um, my mayoral report. As I said in the report, it, um, it, it's been um, a busy month, especially kilometres wise. We've done a lot of travelling in this time. Um, and, uh, but all important tables to be seated at. Um, over the last 10 days, there have been many commemorative services in recognition of those that paid the ultimate sacrifice during their engagement in the Vietnam War. Um, Councillor Black and I attended the Vietnam Veterans Commemorative Service for Peter McDuff here in Darlington Point. Um, and that was um, very well attended and quite a moving ceremony. And then last Friday, I attended uh, the um, Vietnam 50 Year Service facilitated by Griffith City Council and the RSL. Um, it was quite, it's quite confronting to, uh, to see um, what our soldiers, uh, the position they were placed in, and and to be quite frank, the lack of um, resources they had at hand when they first went to Vietnam. So um, it was very well done. There was um, a presentation which Peter Cosgrove um, uh, was the was the featured person who spoke to, and then it was live streamed the uh, national service from the War Memorial in Canberra. So. It's a great opportunity and um, I think, you know, 50 years is a long time for somebody to say thank you for your service, but I think it's been particularly well done in the last two weeks. So I do think those that, um, that, that served and those that continue to serve. Um, I had the great pleasure of attending the official opening of the Wadawa Cultural Centre in Darlington Point on the 9th of August. Um, this project, a uh, collaborative project between the New South Wales Government and Murrumbidgee Council has seen the realisation of an Indigenous centre of art, culture and history brought to life in magnificent colour, created by Ellen McKenzie. It was a really well done day. They had the smoking ceremony, welcome ceremony, had cultural dancing, storytelling and the official proceedings all added to the significance of the day. Um, every project needs a champion and Tammy Lee Turpin was this project's passionate and tireless driver. There were many challenges but the end result is proof that it can be done and the community in Darlington Point, thank you for making this happen. Um, on the 26th of July, I attended the Emory Rural Fire Service AGM at the Emory Fire Shed. The meeting was significant as it recognised 33 years of royal commitment by Ken Brain to the community in his involvement with the RFS, um, many, many of which were served as fire captain. And I think Ken is an example, if you call him as a person to ask them to do something else and not get it done. Um, and it wasn't just at the local level, but at the regional level too, that his dedication was most obvious. They have a new fire captain now, Julia O'Connell has taken Ken's um, place. So that starts a new era in their, in their history. Um, Council has its new garbage truck. It's very flash uh, and it's only good, it's not only good to look flash, but you actually have to do the job and I think it's doing a really great job. 
Um, the Collie Andley Vintage Rally Committee facilitated a great weekend of activities and experiences on the weekend of the 12th and 13th of August. Um, they're, a very, uh, they're a very passionate group and a small group, but they certainly know how to put on a weekend of experiences. Um, uh, as I um, alluded to, it's finals time in all of our sporting um, competitions at this time of year. Uh, we have good representation across our three communities, but I'd like to recognise Council's workforce in making our sporting events and surrounds. Um, their presentation was second to none at the weekend, and we have many visitors who commented on how good things look. Uh, the Murrumbidgee LGA welcomed three new Australian citizens at a ceremony conducted in Geraldry last week. Um, we have three new conferees of Kevin Moran, Jackie Ann Malloy, and Lisa Hall. <coughs> Uh, and they were really welcomed by myself and a member for Murray, Helen Dalton, and their family and friends. I mentioned in my report that the Jewelry MPS is experiencing um, ongoing RM staffing shortages. Short term RM placements are in place, but are just that short term. We've been having many conversations at local um, cluster and um, Murrumbidgee local health district level. Um, in an attempt to address this with a greater level of certainty. Um, it's very challenging, um, as are all health and aged care related engagements at the moment, but um, we luckily have uh, very loyal staff in our MPS and the aged care facility in, in Collie Ambly. But if you, um, uh, it's an extremely stressful place that our regular uh, and very loyal and committed staff find themselves in. But um, we've been having many conversations around that. Um, it's, it's frustrating to say the least. Um, uh, we attended the New Highway Task Force Committee in Dubbo, Ranjo board dinners and meetings, a Ranjo Health Murrum Gucci Health Knowledge Precinct meeting in Albury, a meeting with the Albury Wodonga Health Advocacy, uh, Advocacy Group looking at the development of um, the most appropriate um, regional health facility there. And the Murray Darling Association were meeting in Griffith and many, many other meetings that are listed there. Are there any questions, please? <coughs> I'm wondering with um, your meeting with the Murrumbidgee Health Knowledge Precinct, were there any positives that came out of that? Or? Um, well, when I walked out of the meeting, I, I said to John, so what happened at that meeting? Um, I think it's, it is an innovative blue sky thinking <coughs> trying to operate or act above the operational, uh, uh, taking on board innovative thinking, uh, education um, modelling and how that's rolled out. Um, it, it just, yeah, trying to, trying to think what else they can bring to the local health district that will enable better service delivery um, yeah, it's 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 another layer or another initiative, um, and just how it is rolled out will be interesting to see. It does have the current funding apparently, so there's a lot a lot to be on board. They are doing lots of um, uh, stakeholder engagement at the moment. Like they spoke to the Ramjo Group last week. They're speaking at the local health advisory committee forum in De Northland at the end of August. Um, yeah, they're they're on a they're on a tour of um, communication and information at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see how it progresses. Yeah. You got anything else to add to that? No. No. Okay. So is it federal or state that's in in like pushing the strings for this? Okay. <laughs> At the minute, it's state funded. State. Yeah, New South Wales. New South Wales state funded. Yeah, Hillary would be loving that. It's a million dollar rollout. 
but that's their, their seed, their initial seed funding to get it up and going. Yeah. So New South Wales is pushing the wheelbarrow, but it doesn't have the spot for the end result. Oh, are you talking about the hospital redevelopment? I was talking about the knowledge precinct. Um, the New South Wales government has allocated 585 million in conjunction with Victoria, in conjunction with Victoria to redevelop the existing site. At all, yeah. Um, but the, um, there's many different points of view about whether that is the most prudent thing to do, or do you go for a greenfield site either in Henry or in Wodonga? And um, like we haven't even got the they haven't even got the master plan yet. So there's lots of talking going on. It is political. It is cross border. Um, the Border Medical App, uh, Association have one opinion on it. The, um, the health departments have another um, opinion on it. Albury we're going to health have another opinion on it. So um, when it com comes to clinical services plans, mm. they have one from the Border Medical Association. Albury we're going to health are developing one too. So it's going to be. Um, it's 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 going to be a very challenging journey. You got anything else to do? No. no. There you go. Um, so we we had uh, a whole day of health meetings, which were, um, yeah, um, informative, but yeah, lots of lots of information is still required to progress both initiatives. Anything else? If not, would somebody like to move, please? Move Council Rising, Council Major. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Um, we'll move to item one, please. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Before I um, uh, uh, talk about the report that I'm doing uh, in the business page, I just want to update the Council on a few things. Um, number one, and and thank the community. We know that the, uh, the roads um, suffered some uh, damage from the most recent floods and the unfortunate part is that we need to gather a lot of data, a lot of information and put forward applications to seek flood damage uh, funds to repair that. Um, our, our application is going to be in the order of about uh, $12 million, so you can assume that we, you can rest assured there's about $12 million worth of damage out on the roads. So, we're hopeful, we've made that application, we're hopeful that that will be accepted and then we'll start, um, uh, the works programs are, are in train to, to uh, work on all of those um, areas that we've identified and we'll be able to get stuck into to those. Uh, in addition to that, we've got another $2.8 million uh, that we can allocate, so just in case um, uh, there were some other areas that weren't. Uh, that weren't classified strictly under flood, um, we'll be allocating that money to those things to fix up those roads. Just on a few little things, the Collie Amberley Hall upgrade um, uh, will be ready for our council meeting on the 12th of September. So our next council meeting is on the 12th of September in Collie Amberley and it will be at the, at the refurbished Collie Amberley Hall. Um, the Brother Place, the steel structures, they're due to be completed by the end of August, um, and then we will uh, start commencement with the civil works um, uh, after that, so the, the paving, the footpath, and things like that. The Monash Park netball uh, courts, they're due to be commenced uh, late September, early October, uh, along with the Luke Park work that is happening there as well. Um, we were in the process of, of seeking a variation to an Adrian Douglas um, park grant for the fence to move the fence to the Splash Park. Um, we are currently at the moment seeking some um, letters of support from various community groups and stakeholders in relation to that because that was one thing that the state government wanted to see was that was called for by the community. So hopefully we'll be able to get that uh, knocked over in the next next week or two, uh, submit that to the government and release that money from Adrian Douglas Park fence to the to the Splash Park fence along those um, along those lines. 
and uh, Young, Young Street is progressing uh, stormwater um, and um, sewer <coughs> is um, practically completed, I believe, getting close. Correct. Correct, yep, um, which is a, a good thing. So the next thing will be water mains, electricity, whatever, whatever roads, blah, 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 blah channels, <laughs> lots of things um, to add on to those. So it's, it's progressing well. And um, I just thought I'd give those a quick update on some of those projects for uh, council and community. Um, in relation to the other project that we got, the rural <coughs> farm grade waste and recycling collection. I think that's probably the third name that I've called it. <laughs> a different report every time around. It, we'll get one to run off the uh, thing. We survey closed on the 9th of August. We had over 70 returns to the office. You can see, um, you, you always look to see um, um, survey results to be able to uh, determine whether uh, you can rely on the information. So if those seven, if if we have potential of 432, then that's potentially a 16% return, but at least we know that we've only got 864 uh, rural assessments. So that's an 8% return, which is a fairly good, fairly good return to be able to rely on the information. We normally work on uh, 5% reliable, 10% you can bank on. So the, the information that comes through is, is something that we can uh, uh, certainly rely on. And the numbers were, the numbers were fairly, fairly strong. It was all around the uh, 75 to 80% that they uh, was supported for the farm gate collection, that it was fortnightly, and they saw that there was value, even at the $495 to collect those two, two streams over that time. Only 55 <laughs> people listed where they identified, and 39 was from Collingham, one from Darlington Point, um, um, one from Jerulery, and one from Logie Murray. 14 from Jerulery. 14 from Jerulery, sorry. Yeah. Um, so whilst they're strong, I want to do uh, a little bit more work before I bring it back to Council, uh, particularly along the lines of the uh, the additional piece of equipment that we've got is the um, front uh, front load truck, and we've had I've had at least two to three conversations with with larger larger properties, or they've got other manufacturing, or they've got other things on site where the front load bins would be far greater advantage to them than, than just the, the um, household collections. So I want to I want to spend the next month or so. Um, uh, probably the six weeks because we probably wouldn't be able to get back to the October meeting anyway to work a little bit more on those to see what sort of potential that is because that could really shore up this uh, plus the other day we, we were always we spoke about a couple of times trying to get those exact numbers of, of houses out there so we've got a mixture of uh, of we know through our rates um, that uh, if their postal address is a is a physical address on, on site We've got another list, which is our um, rural addressing, where we'll, the rural addressing was normally only done if there was a, uh, uh, a house or uh, uh, something there that needed to have a respond to. So we'll double check from that to try and get that number down, which, which we have assumed is between 432 and 600 odd, because that makes a big difference. The more, the more homes, uh, the more services we got, the, uh, the less that we can bring the price down because of the economies of scale. So there's a few things like that that I want to, want to do before we bring forth a report to actually say, yes, we're going to move forward on that. And then in saying that, like we have an aspiration of the 1st of July, 2024, if that's pushed out another three months because of equipment and things like that, I don't think we should be stuck on that. We can do part, um, part fees for the year and things like that. Uh, just, I want to, um, or annual leave, just seek um, a week's leave from the 18th to the 22nd of September inclusive will be my request. Uh, Newell Highway Task Force, um, Council McRae mentioned that uh, Council McRae, Council Black and I attended that um, because whilst we had our meeting first off, then we went into our strategic planning and it's been extremely, extremely important that we get forward uh, all of our issues um, down so that we can um, strategically plan that. The, um, the, new, the Newell Highway is broken up into two regions. You've got the West uh, for transport for New South Wales, you've got the Western and the South. And uh, 
primarily it's always only ever been represented by the by the Western region. So we've always been pushing and pushing and pushing that there is a uh, a Newell Highway south of West Wylong to Tokemore. And um, so we, we've been always doing that. So we get in there advocating for those plenty of, for our patch between Tokemore and um, West Wylong in particular with the Southern region. And so we wanted to put forward all of our issues, which were surrounded intersections, uh, safety, overtaking lanes, truck parking bays, um, and so on and so on, mostly with the safety aspect. And that's what, um, that's what the theme of virtually everything that was brought forward was around that, that safety and the reliability of the, of the, um, the Newell Highway. Um, the reliability of uh, finding all of the areas that are um, flood prone. So what come out of the, out of the uh, meeting was that um, there be some separate work done on identifying all those other areas apart from West Wyoming to Forbes, which everybody knows that goes under, but we've got uh, the stuff around um, Narandra, uh, the stuff around Moree and things like that to identify all those areas and see what their triggers are. We, we mentioned up there that um, it's fine to um, lift the road from Moree to um, Bongabilla out of the floodplain, but if the Gundawindi River is is chopped and you can't get in the gutter with you, then there's no point in doing all those things to try and get that connection so we can see where the value for money for that is going to be. We also, because a lot of intersections come up that they're doing another, they want to do a specific piece of work on all of those intersections that are around. So we'll be pushing forward our, our major intersections being Kidman, uh, Kidman and the Newell and Canago and Kidman as the, as the major ones, as does Narandra and Irrigation Way, and they had another one. And the Sturt. And the Sturt, yeah. Um, and, and the Kidman and the Sturt, to, to put those forward. So it was a very, um, uh, it was a good meeting at the end of the day. We, we put the task force on. As uh, as was was mentioned, there's over a billion dollars that has gone in with uh, overtaking lanes. There's nearly, an over, the, the, nearly a 1.8 kilometre overtaking lane every 10 to 15 kilometres across the, the Newell or what that's potentially to be done from uh, the south right through to the north, which is um, is quite um, quite good when you think of frustrations of caravans and trucks and everything else like that. It takes all of those things out. Um, the other thing that we're always cognizant of is the, the inland rail and keeping great separation of the inland rail to the Newell Highway. Uh, specifically, there's probably only two intersections that are covered off on that, um, particularly when the Parks Bypass is under construction right now, um, which will go right around the back of back of Parks. Um, the other thing that was put on for the next bypass as a priority is Coonabarra Brown. There was always the conversation sitting in there on the um, uh, the twinning of the Newell Highway from north to south, so we've got double lanes both ways. Um, so what was recommended um, was that in that consideration that we get a we get a policy of transport for New South Wales. So where they're looking for new realignments of roads, particularly say when they're going through the flood area uh, between West Wyland and Dubbo, that they procure enough land that in the future they can just go there and twin it, right? Not have to go back for that whole process and try and acquire that land again. Do it all of that at, at one time. So. When, when the Coonabarra Brown bypass is done, when the, when the flooding is done. It might even come out, because we mentioned it there, that they might put a, um, a parallel highway higher in that flood prone area, and that'll be it. And if it floods, then we're single lane for a little while. If not, it's double lane. It's, it's some really, some really forward thinking things in the, in the uh, director of uh, the, the regional manager in charge of the Western Division when he's coming to a Western part of Transport for New South Wales, Alistair, um, when he's thinking of all of those things. So it was quite good that we've got that feedback from from there. Um, just to confirm that the uh, Family Fund Day is, is set for the 29th of September. So councillors and your families, if you're planning to attend, please advise Julie so we can just get the numbers um, to advise off. Um, I'm uh, already aware that the council meeting is for September. I just put it in here for noting the exchange from the uh, 19th of September to the 12th of December due to an 
uh, unavoidable absence of the mayor. The unavoidable absence of the mayor is when she will officially be getting her gong for OAM at Government House in Sydney. Okay. Sorry to do that. Just uh, future movements. We've got a, a um, the Country Mayor's Health Forum is only the 15th of September. They, they said 14th to 15th, and then they, and when you look at final, see the final agenda, we can leave here in the morning and get over there to start and come back again. So, basically, <coughs> annually, the uh, MDA conference, um, and so on and so forth throughout there. For those. So, any questions? Just, oh, um, with the, um, the uh, Mule Highway Task Force. Yeah. Do we get any information at all? Is there anything that for the southern end that we sort of uh, are able to get through, like the intersection of the Kidden Way and the Mule? <laughs> yeah. That's identified. Yeah. It's, just a, it's identified. Yeah. And, and, and the, the thing is, is that well, the billions of dollars that have been invested, they, they got there. Um, we're, we're probably thinking that. Um, we're better off in a situation now, not going to the government and asking for uh, six hundred million dollars to do something. We're we're probably not going to get something like that, but we may get a fifty million dollar intersection or a twenty five million dollar yeah. intersection upgrade yeah. with the current uh, way governments are handing out money at this point in time. Well, when we're coming back from the last council meeting, we came past and there was a truck that was cutting <laughs> off the new, totally. I mean, the, the, the Kidman. Yep. And he was there for another 40 minutes while we waited and got him going, and then the police turned up. <laughs> but they did remove him from the truck. They did. So that's good news. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So does the task force have the ability to have those plans ready, actioned, ready to go? And that's what we're, we're, we're planning on. So there'll be the task force will do those requests to transport for New South Wales, and then transport for New South Wales will um, engage and get those done. So whether they do that uh, through their designers internally or whatever, that's what they're what they always talk about being shovel ready. Yes, and that's the, that's what they've that's what they've done. They virtually had that ability to be shovel ready. The only other thing, so they got the two hundred million dollars for the flood. A lot of that has been taken up in getting the designs and everything right for that, and they'll have a little bit of money to do some some work. But by the end of that, they'll have their shovels already waiting for that next, next tranche, tranche. eight hundred or a billion dollars that they need, or whatever it is. To, but at least to, they do yeah. have the plan. They will have the plans. So um, it's a lot of money for plans, but um, yeah, then as as uh, John said, then the next time the money becomes available, we will be ready to go. Yeah. And we, we, we understand, so Hume Highways um, all uh, is, is finished, they just got to keep it maintained. The Princess Highway is getting a lot of work done on. We, we, ident we identified Newell as the third uh, you know, ranking if there's going to be anything, but when they see the freight movements that go on the Newell, and, and it's quite quite strange. So the the numbers that go through Geraldry of trucks are around about the uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand a day type of thing. The same once you get past West Wild and everything else like that, it jumps up to four thousand. Not what I saw. No, I did the whole length the other day, and and I think the Kidman Way in front of my place is busier than the Coonabarabran area. Yeah. yeah. If it, if I'm going to take off the roadwork trucks. I took the roadwork trucks off because there's lots of roadworks happening <laughs> up at Pindawindi and further south, but you take those parts out. Yeah. You uh, did speak to that and we spoke at length about how busy the Kidman Way is and how used it was during the flooding, um, mm. whatever. They um, scoffed. Yeah, they, they don't seem to take those feeder roads, um, well, not roads of strategic importance. Seriously, and as um, John alluded to, you know, it's not just it's not just the Kidman Way, it's the Irrigation Way, it's the Billy Griffin Way, it's all of these roads which are extremely busy, busy roads, um, but they just seem to have a focus totally on the, the main highway as well as strategic importance. So, but that we did speak at length and made them listen to it. On that, on that, I think you should get on to Miranda. Council. Council, Shire Council, I'll just talk about the Shire Council or Council. Shire Council is. 
because they were very vocal about this, and we need counters south south of the Newell Highway, uh, Sturt Highway, yeah. Yeah. and and north of the Newell uh, north of the Miranda, yeah. north of the Miranda, because the, the two pictures what we're hearing in Dubbo yeah. don't make sense of what we know. <coughs> Did I not see those counters just Jill and Barbie? And just what are they though? That's the black box. That's on the stir highways. Is that on the stir? <coughs> that's on the stir. Oh, no, it was on the Newell too. No, yeah, I can't get Newell and stir. Yeah, yeah. It's probably wrong spot. Wrong spot because that's an intersection there. Yeah. You want to get south of the intersection and north of the intersection. Yeah. Oh, that's where they are. They are counters, are they? Yeah, that's it. I thought they wanted their camera phones. No, no. no. <laughs> Signage up now. So all of those, all those four panels are just solar panels. Actually, <laughs> run up, yeah. run so who's putting those in place? The Transport, Transport New South Wales. Yeah. 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 Did you see them just south of Gillingham Barber? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. You never know your luck, and then we could actually do it. The risk, the risk in doing it that way is that they say, no, we're not going to support that project for whatever reason. Do we not have documentation that they are supporting the project? No, they're, they're saying we, we've assessed your eligibility, we've not approved the program for it. So we've given them a high level, this is what we want to do, and they haven't raised any concerns, but they won't give us the, yes, absolutely, that's fine, go ahead with that, we will definitely fund that project. They still want us to submit this. This is essentially a another grant application to confirm. And, and there's no reason, like we're expecting it will more than likely be approved, but we don't want to be in a position where we've spent spend a million dollars that said it's not going to cover. So we have yeah. Yeah. We've got we're it. We, in the bank. We, we have a million dollars that we will definitely be able to spend on a project related to. So we've got the money, but we haven't got the We've got the cash, we've got the cash, but we're just oh, waiting for that. Seriously? Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, and and whilst, whilst that one just jumped in my head is that um, uh, Public Health and Works also deemed that the caravan park is eligible for other things. So the roadworks was inside. Is that under the roads or is that under a public, the public works? It's under the same rules, yeah. um, but it's assessed by, instead of being assessed by Transport for New South Wales, it's assessed by Public Works. Right. So that form has been sent off to them and that's what, what I was referring to before. So right. some of the, the works that we originally picked up in there they actually have said, no, that's actually not for restoration or emergency in relation to um, essential public assets. That's actually counted disaster operations. So that's under the SES funding. So we're now chasing up that component as well. Um, but we'll get there. So just go on the back of what the, the mayor was saying about, like, can we make some progress? So we did sell some old cabins. And yeah, 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 yeah. So can we can at we least expend that? We can. To get some progress. Yes. Okay. It looks really Christmas bare. Christmas holidays are coming up. That's yeah. right. It's, uh, we're going to have an opportunity. Yeah. But it's in, it's in our long-term plan. Yep. So I agree. I'd be keen to see some progress. Yeah. And, you know, we're a little bit gun shy of how good the public works. Will it? Just, just, <laughs> just saying, you know, because um, uh, without being judgmental, if we could um, proactively do something ourselves to get some cabins at least ordered because we know how long everything takes and you know we don't want to be in the same position waiting for the cabins as we are for lots of other stuff so are we are we able to do that uh, i would recommend not buying the cabins ahead of any decision coming from there what about using the money that we've got from the sale of the previous cabins yeah well as we've, we've spoken about that, we could, um, we were going to have the, the different um, scale of the different uh, cabins. I suppose we can go ahead and buy them. Yeah, yeah. And get what, a couple of those. What does council think? Would you like to proactively start purchasing some cabins with money? We end up with more have. cabins than what we thought we were going to end up with. That's what we yep. decided. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, what yeah decided. I mean, that's what you have decided. Do you think we could put it in action? Yep, yeah. yeah. sorry. We would need to oh, have yes. them in a less desirable place, perhaps than the nicer cabins yeah. on the, the river. The river views. Yeah. Yeah. So that would all have to be taken into consideration as well. Okay. Uh, so one other question for you, John. Can you give us an update on where the electricity upgrades are at Monash Park as far as a um, large transformer? And I'll uh, defer to Tom. Okay, so um, Council has purchased a 190 kilowatt unit of some sort of, of generator that um, will house the Monash Park uh, if it goes into an emergency operations centre and all the electricity is down. Uh, that unit um, will then advocate uh, that power. Applications are being assessed as we speak now with essential energy for the upgrade of the power pole um, transformer to a 300 kVA. Uh, and we're in the process of wiring up that generator um, uh, to the facility. So that's what we're doing. So hopefully in the next coming weeks, we'll have most of that all wired up, ready for the gen. Has um, essential energy given a time frame or when the we the time frame? So at present, what is the required 
KVA for that whole facility? Uh, it's pulling 102 amps. So the generated there is sufficient enough to carry those loads if everything was switched on. So the assessment come back as the three, 300 kVA, not yeah. the 315 yeah. which we first thought. The designers have come up with the transformer for 300 kVA on that pond, and that'll be housing obviously those homes within that facility also. Um, the generator, sorry, it's 146 kilowatt unit kVA. So Tom, that so, still has to be wired. Has to be wired up. There's a special. We need um, the switchboard on the back of the Monash Oval needs to be removed and replaced. So uh, we're just getting some quotes now on all the the boxes and devices that need to be put in those places to make that happen. Okay. Any further questions of John's report? Right. Something like to move. Move Councillor Kirkby, second Councillor Church and those in, and the recommendation will read. Um, the information contained in the general manager's monthly report be noted and council approve annual leave to Mr. John Spears, the general manager, from the 18th to the 22nd of September 2023, inclusive. I think the recommendation those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against? Carried. Thank you. Item two, please. Um, thank you to you, Madam Mayor. This report. Seeks council approval to amend our current um, section 7.12 job contributions plan by amending the uh, works program contained in that plan add two uh, further items of amending uh, construction to the fund. Um, just for way of background, uh, council, uh, section 7.12 buys a 1% levy of development costs uh, for developments over 200,000. Dollars and Council earlier this year amended the plan by removing the exemption for uh, um, developments such as solar farms, wind farms, uh, battery storages, and um, cross fans. And since that time, we've been uh, negotiating with, um, to uh, complete uh, voluntary planning agreements on three renewable energy developments, which which once signed and completed should see completion of uh, three of the capital projects listed in our works program. So um, we've <coughs> we add a couple more to it. Um, um, the current priority one is for uh, critical workers to, um, uh, housing, which would, um, the money that, um, or the levies would uh, fund uh, the construction of critical housing, critical workers housing um, three towns, as well as um, um, some minor um, infrastructure works to heritage and cultural precincts as required. Um, we required uh, an amount of $10 million for critical worker housing. Um, we're also currently in negotiations with two fairly major uh, wind and solar developments as well. So um, by applying it, amending it now, we'll be able to apply that 1% for the uh, critical worker housing. Uh, Gary, can you um, uh, speak to the critical house housing um, priority and what it actually means? Uh, absolutely. Um, obviously, there's a uh, critical housing Critical workers housing um, includes a couple of different areas. One is uh, critical workers uh, coming from uh, Griffiths work at Bayada, is one for example. Yeah. Um, uh, we also are aware that uh, a number of state government agencies like ambulance, police, teachers, uh, have got uh, housing shortages in various towns. So we'd like to, um, as well as council too, I imagine, and probably the other. Uh, major employees we're not aware of at the moment. So we're looking to provide that critical worker housing ourselves um, uh, at Young Street, hopefully uh, Collam and that gets established in, as well as Monomara in, in Geraldry. Okay. Are there any uh, questions of Gary regarding his report? I'll say it's too, too I'll sorry, Steve. Well I'll sorry, Steve. Steve. Nice to see you. Um, Steve. No, I've got nothing to, to add to that. Um, as I said, the, um, the plan seems to be working. Like I said, I know at the recent um, uh, 
meeting of the Western Regional Planning Panel. Um, the, um, our contributions plan was defended by um, the planning panel, basically filling the um, developers of those solar farms and what have you. The council's got a plan in force and it's stating that um, the 1% levy is required. That's it. And that was as blunt as it was presented uh, to the applicant that one there. So I think um, this one here says the, the recommendation is just to get it on exhibition and um, we'll come back in about um, 42 days' time. Thanks, Steve. I think um, Council um, would like to recognise the amount of work that has been put into this, this area of our business, and it would appear that it will work in, in, to our advantage. And um, I think we, we will, we're all uh, very grateful that the investment of the time and the energy and smarts into this space will, will see Council being beneficial into the future. So thank you. Any further questions? If not, um, would somebody like to move, move Councillor Black, second of Councillor Turgwin? And the recommendation will be that Council A accept the amendments to a Stem Development Contributions Plan, Section 7.12, the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act of 1979, and place the plan on public exhibition. And B, upon completion of the exhibition period, Council officers undertake a review of the submissions, if any, and report back to Council. I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. Uh, Those against? No. No? Okay. okay, item three, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, this report says uh, Council uh, approval to place a draft plan of management for the Bal Moringa at Geraldry. Uh, see the public exhibition. Now, there is a slight change or correction in the report. Under officer comment, second paragraph at the end of that, uh, should read that uh, submissions being received up to the 6th of October rather than 6th of September. Make a note of that. Thank you for that correction. Are there any um, questions of Gary, please, regarding this um, item number three? If not, it's on the item in. Move Councillor Major, second of Councillor Saxon. And the recommendation will be that Council endorse the draft plan of management for Bell Moringa to enable SAME to proceed to public exhibition. I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you again through you, Madam Mayor. This report takes uh, Council uh, resolution to adopt the draft plan of management for Corey Central Hall. It was presented to Council on 26th of June approval to place it on public exhibition. At the completion of the public exhibition, no submissions have been received. It's been brought back to Council for final adoption. Are there any questions of Gary regarding this item number four? What would somebody like to move, please? Move Councillor Durfee, second of Council Major. And the recommendation will be that Council adopt the draft plan of management for Corey Central Hill. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Item five, please. Uh, thank you, Chair, Madam Mayor. The next report deals with a brand new policy um, of Council, which um, involves um, setting development standards for building over or adjacent to uh, Council infrastructure. <coughs> policy that um, has been worked on between technical services and planning. And the resolution says Council approved a place it on public exhibition for a minimum period of 28 days. Okay, are there any questions of Gary, please, regarding this um, item number five? If not, would somebody like to move, please? Move Councillor Major, second of Councillor Turbot. And the recommendation will be that the draft building over or adjacent to council infrastructure policy be endorsed to enable the same to proceed to public exhibition. I'll put the recommendation that is in favour, please, and I will go as against. Carry. Thank you. Item six, please. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. 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 Uh, Drilldry and Darlington Point, and uh, which, is, as Council is aware, have expired and ready to be renewed uh, for the next short period. And 
was presented to council very briefly at, at, a, at a workshop. And the resolution seeks council approval to um, start the um, consultation process to re-establish the two alcohol free zones guidelines and um, subject to further report back to council to that notification period. Any further questions of Gary regarding um, item number six? Just a, quick, just a quick question. With the alcohol free zones when they first uh, announced, who decides, or was it public submissions that said we'd like to have these as alcohol free zones, or did council staff just interested? Through uh, the generally. Uh, it's a matter for council, and that may have come up. Generally, they would come up if there are there are issues, with, um, especially if um, any liaison with the police. A lot of times, they come from uh, police comments about how it's this at all this uh, inappropriate activity in certain areas, or council is aware of it themselves. But any person can bring this up, council, the member of public, uh, and bring it up to council for consideration. Thank you. So this, this consultation cost has only been two identified by Jerubi and one at Darlington Point. Does the consultation allow members of Collie Emily to suggest an area? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Is that, that clear? Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, are there any further questions of Gary or comments? If not, somebody like to move? Move Councillor Brass, second move Councillor Saksik, and the recommendation will read that one, Council carry out the consultation process for the establishment of the current alcohol free zones as per the guidelines, and two, a report be prepared for the October meeting of Council after consideration of submissions received. With the recommendation, those in favour, please say aye. Aye. And those against, carry. Thank you. Um, I can Seven, these are reports for noting. Um, so item, item seven, we'll just set a monthly investment report for the month of July 2023. Um, so as councillors are aware, we report, uh, we provide this report every month for FYP under the regulations. Um, at the end of July, council had about $33 million of um, investment, which is set out in the rate of return above the, the benchmark and other rates was also um, the excess of what we budgeted for the year so far. So we're watching at this stage. Thank you, Caitlin. Are there any questions of Caitlin regarding her um, monthly investment report? If not, would somebody like to move? Move Councillor Major, seconded Councillor Furphy. And the recommendation will be that Council note the monthly investment reports identifying all money Council has invested under Section 65 of the Local Government Act 1993. With the recommendation, those in favour? No, aye. Those aye. Those against? Kelly. Thank you. Um, item 8, please. Uh, thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor. This item 8 relates to um, the development applications approved by Council during uh, uh, July under delegated authority. Any questions of Gary regarding this information? If not, somebody would like to move? Move Councillor Black, seconded Councillor Turgren. And the recommendation will read the information contained in the development applications approved under delegation July 2023 report be noted. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Carry. Thank you. Meeting. So I'd just like to ask ask Gary about there was a fatal accident in Collie last week. Is there anything you can report to the community about that accident? Uh, thank you, um, Councillor Black. Um, last uh, on Monday, or sorry, Monday week ago, uh, I was advised there was a fatal accident that occurred in Kingfisher Avenue, Collie uh, Ambly. I attended the scene and was informed by the police and the um, forensic team there that the gentleman died in the process of loading a tractor onto his truck. Um, uh, obviously, he had a zero of the two days on that weekend fire. Um, it appears that in the process of loading 
the tractor, it's, it's, it's come back on top of him and landed uh, on, uh, crushed, landed on, landed on, landed on top of him and crushed him death. Um, we undertook a report, provided photos to our insurance, and um, they're currently looking at it. And it's, the accident occurred on a road reserve. Um, uh, he wasn't instructed to be there, he wasn't instructed to unload there. So I understand it's yet to be confirmed that um, council's insurers believe that um, there should not be any issues for council. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> There's no further business. I will declare the meeting closed.